it's Nikki. So welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking all about ecological empathy and how it can help solve climate change. Climate change can be such an anxiety inducing topic to talk about but rest assured we're going to keep it very hopeful and optimistic on this channel as always. So grab a cup of tea, light a candle, get cozy. You deserve to be cozy because we're talking about a nice topic today. Empathy is all about care. It's about self-care, caring for others, caring for the earth and being able to put yourself in someone else's shoes. Thank you so much for joining. Cheers and don't forget to subscribe. Climate change is a global emergency and it can be such a huge cause of worry because the problem is so big and change is not being made fast enough. I know I've definitely felt guilty about climate change. I know a lot of people feel guilty about climate change because big business wants us to feel culpable and invest millions in advertising campaigns to take away from their own responsibility for the crisis. Because we feel this guilt, we start to make changes in our lives that we think are gonna make a huge difference. We recycle, we use tote bags, but we're left feeling pretty hopeless when climate change doesn't end as a result of our actions. But I'm gonna argue that we're thinking about it all wrong. We can't buy our way out of this crisis because the foundations of the world's economy has been built on the exploitation of nature and vulnerable people. The way our society functions is all about me, 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 and how can I get the most out of this while paying the least? And there's no incentive for anyone to consider the effects of their actions on vulnerable people or on the planet. As someone who's just finished writing a book on climate change, shameless plug. I know a thing or two about climate change solutions, but there was one solution that stuck out to me while I was writing the book that I feel like no one talks about. And it's so simple and so obvious, and I think that's why people don't talk about it. Empathy. If you're alive today, which I'm hoping you are since you're watching this video, you have inherited a world where oil and gas companies have spent millions and millions lobbying governments against putting in place climate policies. In 2021 alone, the amount they spent was $150 million. You've also inherited a world where we use and throw away plastic like it's nothing. You've inherited an economy that sees nature as something that can be used to make money, not as something to be admired for its own sake. And that's not your fault. Because we live in a system of capitalism, we have to abide by its rules in order to survive. And in this system, trees aren't valuable until they're cut down to make paper. Animals aren't precious until they're sold for fur or meat or leather. Precious metals must be extracted, even if it's at the expense of ecosystems and human rights. Capitalism doesn't reward empathy. So today we're gonna explore what a more empathetic society would look like and how that kind of society can solve climate change. So empathy is about feeling concerned for people or things other than yourself. And it's about sitting with someone or something and really thinking through, okay, what is life like for you? What do you feel on a daily basis? And really enveloping yourself in that so you can truly understand what it's like to be in that person or thing's shoes. And the reason it can be quite difficult sometimes is because it requires vulnerability. It requires you to find something within yourself that connects with that feeling. But it's so powerful because once you can see something from someone else's point of view, it can inspire you to take action, it can motivate you to make changes in your life that could help that person or thing. If we see ourselves as part of and not separate from nature, we're less likely to want to destroy it. And if we're raised to be empathetic towards nature, which we're not in this society, we're much more likely to want to protect it. Unfortunately, in our modern world, humans are nothing more than consumers and nature is nothing more than a dollar sign. We live in a hierarchical system where we've put ourselves at the top and we see ourselves as better than nature, as more superior because of our intelligence. And because we've amassed so much power on this planet, our egos have been inflated so much to the point where we're just destroying everything and we don't even care. There's also a gender aspect to this which I find interesting because empathy is seen as a feminine trait and obviously if your society is patriarchal and rewards masculine traits then empathy is not going to be prioritized or taught. And if you think about it, a lot of masculine coded behaviors are actually climate destructive like driving a huge car or eating loads of meat, but being nurturing and having empathy for the planet and doing green things is seen as more feminine. So that's what the world looks like, but what could it look like instead? If humans were taught at a young age to have empathy for nature, then we could be stewards and guardians of the earth, seeing our intelligence as an immense privilege and using our knowledge and skills to protect and preserve nature. By using empathy, we can see and acknowledge all the ways in which nature and humans are alike 
make and that we're equal among many millions of conscious beings that live on this planet. We accept that we're really intelligent but maybe in a different way and that other animals have intelligence that we might not understand. We can recognize our unique intelligence as an honor and a responsibility which we use to make the world a better place. We can also acknowledge that humans are nature. We think of ourselves as separate, as somehow special or different, but we're part of it. We cannot exist without it, but it can exist without us. And so we need to humble ourselves a little bit and recognize that we have an important duty to protect it from the damage that we're currently doing. So another problem with our disconnection from nature and lack of empathy for nature is that we've designed a system that's pretty unnatural in terms of exploitation and the waste it produces. So let's break this down. If we had empathy for nature, we could understand that the natural world has a delicate balance and that there is no waste. In nature, everything that's taken is given back and reused in a closed loop system. But we've created a linear system where we take from nature, we make something, and then we don't reuse it. And this waste is created creating huge problems, as you probably already know, so let's not go into that. Just think about the fact that we breathe out carbon dioxide that plants use to create oxygen, which we then breathe in. We have so much to learn that biomimicry is a new scientific discipline that's being used to solve really complex human problems. And there have been some really cool solutions that have come out of it. For example, scientists are using schools of fish to design wind turbines, wetsuits that mimic the skin of beavers, and temperature-controlled buildings that take inspiration from termite mounds. Even if we wanted to be more empathetic, the way our society is built has made that really difficult. Many more people live in cities than in rural areas and we live lives that are extremely far removed from nature. We haven't incorporated enough greenery or wildlife into our cities and we're missing out on the incredible benefits. Incorporating more greenery into cities can improve air quality, can actually boost your serotonin and reduce feelings of stress and anxiety and it can protect against heat waves and flooding and decrease noise pollution. So even though our society isn't very good at helping us build empathy for nature, we can take the initiative and try to build it for ourselves. In human to human empathy, listening is a great way to build empathy. If you listen to someone's life experience, maybe you can find something to connect with. But with nature, we can't converse in the same way, so we have to come up with different ways to talk to or listen to nature. <laughs> So here are some ways that I've thought of that you can listen to nature and build ecological empathy. Number one, expose yourself to nature more. Go hiking, explore your local parks, or just pay attention to how nature it really is all around us. And when you're in nature, be present and mindful and affirm to yourself that you are part of the ecosystem and you belong here. Studies show that being in or even just looking at a picture of nature can boost serotonin and contribute to feelings of happiness and peace. Number two, learn more about nature however you can. Watch nature documentaries, read books, watch YouTube videos, and try to think of what we have in common with nature and wildlife. Number three, when you're going about your daily life, try to think of how nature contributed to the things you do every day. So for example, your phone is made of precious metals that were extracted from the earth. Your clothes are made from cotton or crude oil. Your glasses are actually made from sand. And your food was grown and pollinated by bees and birds. Number four, take political action. So this is more of a collective way to raise empathy. We need to incorporate more greenery and wildlife into our cities. So we can do that by planting trees, investing in community gardens, and letting nature take over where possible. Not trying to trim and control it and have endless lawns that don't really add anything to the natural world. The ideal scenario that comes out of all of this is that we stop thinking of nature as something we can use and start thinking of it as something we depend on and are part of. And once we acknowledge that and incorporate it into our lives and our systems, then we can begin to repair our relationship with it. When we're more empathetic towards nature, we can be more mindful of how we use our planet's precious resources. We stop seeing nature as something to be exploited and extracted, but as something to be appreciated for all the other non-monetary benefits it gives us. If we have empathy, we'll also all be more prepared to fight to protect it, which will help solve climate change. Yo, I'm sorry, this is just beautiful. I had to do this part of the video out here. But I think by building more empathy for nature, we'll build more empathy for ourselves. And beyond the obvious benefits of not exploiting people for making money, we'll be kinder to ourselves, we'll be kinder to each other, and we won't hold ourselves to beauty standards and rigid social norms that don't even make sense anymore. And I think the world will be better for it. Like, 
look at this tree compared to that tree this tree is like triangle shaped and this one is like kind of like poofy at the top but it's like i don't think of it as any less of a tree i don't think it's a bad tree i think it's used the sun and the carbon dioxide in the air really well and it looks great it looks good and because i built that empathy for nature hopefully i can look at my fellow humans and say the same thing about them like they look different to what the standard is but that doesn't make them any less good or human or just okay as they are and i think building this empathy for nature will be really key in changing the way we think about these things it's not our fault that our society lacks empathy, but it is within our control to try to shape a more empathetic society. It all starts with us. Not only will this mindset solve climate change, but we'll be happier for it because we'll all live in a kinder world. One where we consider the effect of our actions on each other and on the earth. That's the end of this video. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you think about ecological empathy. And let me know any ways you practice empathy that I haven't mentioned. I hope you had a cosy time and remember to be kind to yourself, to others and to nature. See you next week.